All right, Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh, Bayashim, Yahweh Shai, Bayashim, Harakah, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who teach and rule well and peace and salutation and deliverance to the hopeful elect of Yasha Allah. I like to say Shalom. Um, this lesson is going to go into spiritual symmetry. And um, because, you know, as we continue to grow and await and yearn for the deliverance um, of the hopeful elect of Yasha Allah, um, we're, we're continually growing in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Shai and the understanding of prophecies and of breakdowns and, um, yeah, just equipping ourselves uh, with a better walk uh, spiritually. Uh, but likewise, um, the the symmetry comes in or the the balance is also being able to do that um, in our daily lives to where it does not affect um, our spiritual growth. So I'm going to go into the word here, symmetry. Um, I'm also going to suggest and recommend uh, a couple of videos, which I, I uh, through the spirit, um, clearly uh, draw upon um, as I'm um, just staying pure in my spirit of um, anticipation of the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah, but also knowing that uh, no man knoweth the day nor the hour. So um, I'm going to make some recommendations there, bring out a couple of scriptures and uh, Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying for the elect. So let's start here in, it says symmetry 1560. It says relation of parts proportion. Okay. It says um, Greek symmetria agreement in dimensions due proportion arrangement. Okay. And so um, it says having a common measure, even proportionate, okay, um, together. Um, it says to measure, meaning harmonic arrangement of parts. And so um, it would be beautiful if um, we didn't have to be in Babylon. We didn't have to work. We didn't have to pay bills. We didn't have to deal with family members and all the rest of that kind of stuff. But um, that is a... That is a main core um, walk in which we are dealing with. Um, and, and as we're dealing with that, you know, the time in which we allocate for the spirit, that that is a counterweight to life and, and how we are living life. But all of those things must be harmonic, meaning they must be arranged together. Um, if you um, if you fail to be responsible in your your daily walk as far as uh living life in babylon um as i said it now becomes a burden uh to the body of of uh, brothers camps and now um spiritually as i had said you're not being symmetrical okay everything isn't uh proportionate you know it's it's um uh, it's lopsided you know it's heavy on one side you know, as far as, as the spirit is concerned, you know, as far as your approach and effort and, and diligence towards the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Shai, but then in in, in countermeasure, um, your life is in shambles and, and decayed, and that's not being very uh, symmetrical, you know, and even the scriptures say, you know, a false balance is a abomination unto Yahweh by Shem Shai. So, you know, I always just want to remain centered um, in my approach towards um, the ministry of Yahweh by Shem Shai, but also not um, being delinquent um, in my daily walk to where now um, I'm becoming a hindrance and a burden unto um, the Akim. Okay. So, really, I just wanted to get that um, definition for symmetry, and I want to relate a couple of, uh, like I said, lessons that uh, clearly help me uh, to stay uh, responsible. Uh, towards Yahweh by Shem Shai and myself um, to where, like I said, I'm just not uh, becoming a castaway, as the scriptures say. So here's the first um, video, and you brothers jot these down if uh, you so care to. And then um, the next video here will be uh, responsibility over feelings. Oh, and he's a, uh, I'll give you the, the site here, GMS Dallas class in three, okay? And then um, same here, responsibility over feelings. And then um, you must have a contrite spirit in order to grow. Okay, GMS in Dallas. 
and then uh, this is a video I did last year, a um, little bit past uh, last year, um, under this channel. And then the last uh, video under How Will Shy and Now Will Mariah as well. Um, this year I did about, you know, your Babylonian avatar. And you brothers go check those out, you know, because as you check out those videos, what you'll see is that there is... Um, symmetry in this ministry and the more you're able to um, not have um, lopsidedness in your daily walk um, it helps you just to remain uh, temperate you know ultimately um, to where um, we, we still yearn for deliverance like that's not going to go anywhere um, but there is a sense of responsibility of us working by the sweat of our brow and you know as a scripture I'm going to bring out here in um, so like in Ecclesiastes, uh, the third chapter is going to tell you that you know there's a time for everything, and so if you don't have an allotment for that time of making sure that your life, although we are losing it for you, how by Shemiahushai, um, can still be maintained without it becoming a hindrance. Okay, um, so I looked up the word here uh, symmetrical because I mean even as we look in the mirror, we see. You know symmetry in our body so how much more so with Yahweh by Shemiah Shah designing us to be symmetrical that we should also be symmetrical in our daily walk you know to where we can be symmetrical in the body of Yasha Allah okay so I thought that this was a very interesting fact that I'm going to read um, and this is from an article it says uh, symmetry in nature, fundamental fact, or human bias. So I just thought that this was pretty cool. It says, um, symmetry in sex. It says, the body plans of most animals, including humans, exhibit, exhibit mirror sy symmetry, also called bilateral symmetry. They are symmetric about a plane running from head to toe or head to tail. Bilateral symmetry is so prevalent in the animal kingdom that many scientists think that it can't be a coincidence. So, as I said earlier, Yahweh Shem Yahushua designed us to be symmetrical, to have bilateral symmetry. Okay. Likewise, we have a spirit, which is called pneuma in the in the Greek, and we also have a soul, okay, which is called a psyche in the Greek, and those two are har harmonious. Okay. In the spirit, we are growing, okay, um, achieving uh, that full measure of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai through practice. But then, likewise, our psyche also has to have our soul has to have a place to grow as well. That is symmetry, okay, and that's not a coincidence. So, um, let's get this uh, Ecclesiastes three and one. It says, "To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season." To everything there is a season and a time and purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. Okay, that's labor. That's working. All right. And a time to pl pluck up that which is planted. Okay. Talking about harvesting. It says a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So this is uh, one of the points I want to uh, place some emphasis on. It says a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. And that's what Yahweh Shem Yahweh is doing. He's gathering all of the, the many lively stones of Yashra Allah and bringing them back together into a harmonious group. Okay. It says together measure, meaning harmonic arrangement of parts. Okay. As lively stones, we are building up this spiritual temple of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Okay. But it's not going to be asymmetrical. It's going to be symmetrical means it's going to be evenly distributed in that house all of those many parts of what that focus is but once again you cannot deny what your um your function is of the body and still have a purpose in the body 
So the toe has to perform the feet in the in the functions of a um, toe first, and then it can contribute to the rest of the body. But its main purpose is being a toe in the body of your Habai Shemiao Shai. Lord willing, um, that message is clear. And so that's the time in which we're in, which is Yahweh Shemiah Shai gathering these stones to make everything symmetrical, symmetrical or harmonious. Okay, harmony, fitly join it. Okay, um, it says a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow. You know, and we're sowing spiritual um, offerings unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai to where we can reap those spiritual offerings of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, which is deliverance, salvation, mercy, all of those things. OK, but we cannot if, if, if we don't sow in our daily life, that means we're not going to reap anything. That means that that whole portion of of life, that psyche will now become um, a burden, you know, and Lord willing, I'll do another lesson here that I thought uh, been in meditation about, you know, as far as, you know, not casting burdens on yourself because they become strongholds and strongholds are, you know, being delinquent, you know, with your life overall, whatever that may be, you know, there, there, there's a lot of per se repair we must do in our daily life as we are being repaired by the Holy Spirit and the holy words of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai in our spiritual life. Okay. Um, yep, let's read eight. It says a time to love. Actually, let's read seven. This is Ecclesiastes three and seven, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Okay. So really that's that's uh one of the major points that I just wanted to make as far as you know just understanding that symmetry means that there's time to do both but you have to allot that time to where it actually is harmonious okay one isn't draining the other okay both are working in a a fashion in in a, a frequency which is beneficial not only to the body and unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, but is also benefit beneficial to yourself. Okay, so um, what else do I want to get? Oh, con, con, con. I want to read here a couple of verses here in in the book of Sirach, the forty fourth chapter, uh, because it really goes into what we are gearing ourselves towards. You know, which is ultimate rulership. Um, but you know that that transition, just as we're being translated, uh, as Scripture says, that the kingdom is going to be translated from one people to the other. We are preparing to actually rule, and so in that preparation, going back to symmetry, in that pep preparation, uh, we're preparing spiritually to rule in righteousness, meaning that we have the the laws of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah being placed in our inward parts now to where ultimately that will be uh, solidified and casted into us as a people but not only that we have to understand economics we have to understand trade we have to understand war we have to understand um uh finances okay all of that is in preparation for ruling a kingdom OK, which is the reason why they had kings, they had priests, you know, they, they, it was a government. It wasn't just a, a a one man crew, you know, it was it was kings, it was priests, you know, it was it was officers, you know, and, and you will sit on that that uh, spiritual throne. OK, Lord willing, very soon and you will have governance over all of these things. And we have references in the scriptures of, of men that have done such, but the preparation of that is now, which is why scripture says um, about ruling your household. If you can't rule that, then how are you going to rule the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai? This is a preparation, you know, so so one can't be more than a, than the other. They have to be symmetrical. They have to be balanced. OK. So, so I just want to read a couple of these uh, verses here, which go into those men um, in which we're able to have that symmetry. Okay. 
Uh, this is Sirach 44 and 1. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. Okay. This is the stead in which we come from. This is that that um, lineage. Okay. This is that that pedigree. That's the word I was looking for. The pedigree in which we come from. That stock. Okay. We talk about King David. We talk about um, all the kings of, of the, the the scriptures. Yahweh Shai. Okay. Yahweh Shai is. We have spiritual power in order to make sure everything is in decency and in order. Okay. That's an arrangement. That is harmony. That is symmetry. Okay. It says, let us praise famous. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. It's talking about the elect. Okay. Verse three. It says, such as did bear rule. They did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power. Now we are princes of the power. That means that we have spiritual power and we have, and we have power to rule. Okay. Just as King Solomon did. He prayed for that power. Okay. He received the power and he had to enact the power in real time. Okay, so likewise, us coming from a very low estate, we are now graduating or gradually increasing into that mold of ruling kingdoms. But that must be symmetrical. There's a balance there. Okay, it says such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Okay. Uh, uh, Daniel, clearly uh, another great example of being able to have what that, that symmetry of the spirit and being able to do what, uh, uh, perform in, in the daily walk to where one did not, um, have a burden on the other. Okay. And, and believe me, um, <laughs> I, I speak from experience. It is a practice. Okay. Cause you're going to be vexed many days. You know, you're going, you're not going to want to be around heathens. And like I said, these videos reference these videos. Okay. Cause to me, like I said, I use these videos as, as go-tos, um, as I'm having to deal with Babylon. You know, but I'm also preparing for the kingdom. So that means that in situations I have to overcome it. That's why it says um, the Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. See, we can clearly say, OK, well, <laughs> we're the men that created the heavens and the earth, you know, the Allah, you know, the the many powers of of Yahweh Shai through uh, of Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. Well, we we created the universes and the stars and water and we created air, but we're gonna allow heathens and you know two thirds to to move us off of our, our our center. That doesn't sound like like much power. Who really has the power? You know, it says. Such as dear, did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, okay, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies, leaders of the people by their counsels. This is what Yahweh Shemel Shah is breeding leaders, okay, spiritually and in life, you know. Like you should be the most outstanding person people have ever met because we have this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh by Shimei Shah, and that should translate into this, this world, although wicked as hell, that's where scripture says, ye are the light of the world because you do things at a high or at the highest level that has ever been done. People should be amazed with everything that you put your hands to. Because scripture says, everything that you put your hands to, do unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. 
people should be shocked and astonished. Now, does that mean that you're trying to go into Esau's wicked ass jobs and, and you know kiss his ass and brown nose? Of course not. But you're being blameless, okay? To where that means that you get to work 30 minutes before. It means that you know you you just you just carry yourself with, with high distinction, in dignity, okay, and nobility. Because guess what? If when when you when you give off the energy and vibration of one that is to be honored and reverenced, even though people are still going to cast stones and all the rest of that stuff. But ultimately, they receive that. Because if you act like a nigga, you're going to get treated like one. If you act like a prince of the power, and, and, I, and I say that with salt, okay? You're not going in there telling Esau he's going to be destroyed and, you know, we're going to slaughter him and all the rest of that. Use that for lessons and I don't know how ways and by ways. But you carry yourself with, with a high level of, of self-image and appreciation for yourself and people will respect that. That is you actually leading the people by your example. Okay? And, and really, we're not concerned about, and let me say this, the people who you are leading are the other Akim that, that the Lord has placed you around. You can lead spiritually, but are you leading in life? Because outside of the spirit of Yahweh by Shem and us dealing in camp and and and, and fellowship, and if, if your life is in shambles, that that is a part of you having rulership. You can rule in the spirit, but you're not ruling in in, in your psyche that's not being symmetrical okay it says leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meat, learning meat for the people wise and eloquent it are their instructions beautiful I'm going to read that again Sirach 44 and 4 Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people wise and eloquent are their instructions such as found out musical tunes and recited verses and writings. Rich men furnished with ability living peaceably in their habitations. Look at that rich men furnished with ability living peaceably in their habitations. See, that's the one thing that one of the many things that Esau, the so-called white man, does not want us to have, which is peace. And we're and really when you think about what peace is, it's harmony. And harmony is symmetry. Spiritually. OK. It says all these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop there because I, I really want to get finished to the point. But yeah, it says all these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their time. So that's what made them famous. You know, it wasn't just the ability to understand the spirit and and understand prophecy, but they were famous men in general. Like their life was was something to be admired. Because they were glorious in every step of their walk. Okay? So, um, I want to jump down here to the last verse in Sirach, the 44th chapter. And um, we'll wrap up with, with pretty much this and make a couple of other points that, Lord willing, will uh, drive home the point of being um, spiritually, you know, um, symmetrical or having, you know... Uh, Symmetry in the spirit, you know. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna start at verse 20. Mm, let's start at 19. It says, Abraham was a great father of many people, and glory was there none like unto him who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. Okay. So in the flesh was the covenant made and he was found faithful in the spirit. Symmetry. Therefore, he assured 
him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the most unto the utmost part of the land. Okay, now this is key because we're going to get into a certain word here. It says, with Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham, for Abraham his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him a heritage and divided his portions among the 12 tribes. Did he part them? Now, the reason why I wanted to stop here is because I want to acknowledge. It says he acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him a heritage. Now, when we get this word here, heritage, heritage, it goes into property that is or may be inherited. The scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth. So the practice in which we're doing now is to inherit the earth. But right now we have to be completely symmetrical in order to have enough of the spirit in order to change the landscape of our individual worlds okay in preparation for the world to come and of course your how by shimei shai is going to give the increase on all things but that heritage is what we are, are preparing to actually use and to reign and to rule as those famous men okay it says property that is or may be inherited in inheritance it says, um, wow. Oh man, I didn't even see this earlier. Call like how about she me? I was shot. Woo! It says three Christians, which we know that that's anytime you say you see Christians, just put Israelites. It says, or the ancient Israelites seen as God's chosen people. Now, that's for the definition of heritage. So us being chosen is the heritage of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah, but we are also going to receive a heritage, which is the earth and galaxies and, and mansions, mansions galore. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to get that word um, just because, like I said, it goes into uh, and it reminded me of Salak. Let me find where I am. It reminded me of um, the definition reminded me of. Uh, cosmos, you know, having um, an orderly arrangement because that's really what we will be uh, inheriting is a um, is a kingdom of people and of lands and of resources. OK, but it has to be orderly, just like. A cosmos must be an orderly arrangement. So I just want to touch on a, a few quick words. So this is for the word here, cosmos. It says an apt and harmonious, going back to what? Symmetry. Okay. Harmonic. Okay. A harmonic arrangement or constitution, order, and government. All right. Now let's jump down here to um, yeah, um, part 7a, it says world affairs, the aggregate of things earthly, the whole circle of earthly goods, endowments, riches, advantages, pleasures, etc., which although hollow and frail and fleeting, stir desire, seduced, seduced from Yahweh and are obstacles to the cause of Hamashiach. Um, yeah, really, really, that's it. But I want to concentrate more so on to the first part of this, where it says hollow and frail and fleeting of earthly goods, endowments, riches, advantages, pleasures. So all of these things are essentially the, the carnal uh, aspects of rulership. 
but they have to be done because if not, then your household completely decays. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to end off here in a couple of scriptures because the scripture goes into, uh, being temperate. And that's really another form of, of having symmetry in the spirit. This is Titus one and seven for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of Yahweh. And of course, when you get into that word steward, let's grab that real quick. It's lock, lock. I get that. It says, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of Yahweh, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Okay, it doesn't say not having lucre, but just filthy lucre. Okay, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Okay, so let's get this word here, steward says a manager of household or household affairs. So we're managing the house of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai spiritually, but there's also a physical sense that also needs to be managed, which is our own lives. Okay. In order to gain that preparedness necessary to rule. Okay. Um, it says, especially a steward, manager, superintendent, um, it says to the whom to whom the head of the house or proprietor has entrusted the management of his affairs, the care of receipts and expenditures and the duty of dealing out the proper portion uh oh portion. Let's go back to symmetry proportion. OK. Let me get back here. Portion to every servant and even to the children not yet of age. So yet yeah, your, your lifestyle should be you managing or have being a steward of your life, but also being a steward, steward of um, the men of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. Okay, that is a, a house as well, okay? So it says, um, but a lover, Titus one and eight, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Okay. So we're going to get this word here. Temperate. It's a lot. I think this. Yep. The word here is. Strong's G 1468. Ekratis. Ekratis. It says having power over. See, that's why it's it's you, you have to reflect on when the scriptures say that we are Yasha Allah. We are princes of the power. That means we have the power. You know, scripture says we're the salt of the earth, man. Jacob is the form of all things. But then yet and still we don't have power to rule over these other heathen nations right now. In a in a in a practical sense just something to practice in your daily walk to where vexations are minimal and if you are vexed you're vexed temporarily you know because you're temperate you know let's read that again this is Titus 1 and 8 it says but a lover of hospitality a lover of good men sober just holy temperate this is this is the role of a bishop. It says having power over, possessed of a thing, mastering, controlling, curbing, restraining, controlling oneself, temperate and continent. Okay, not incontinent and continent. Okay, controlling oneself. That means that you're controlling your household. That means that you're controlling heathens. It means that you're that power that you have of Yahweh by Shemiah Washah gives you dominance over every situation that you're going to run into. But if you're not practicing utilizing that power, then the flesh wins. And that's, that's being unbalanced. That's not being symmetrical. So anyway, um, I think I got one more verse here and we'll wrap up. This is first Corinthians nine and 
Yeah. Uh, 25, it says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. So the mastery is the understanding of the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Shah. That is the mastery. That is what we're doing in the spirit. Which translates into being temperate in all things outside of the spiritual cosmos of Yasha Allah. So when we're dealing with any other situation, it says it's temperate in all things, man. That's what these holy words should be doing, building you up to where you're ruling kingdoms. As a king, a king isn't affected by much. As a spiritual righteous man of Yasha Allah, we should not be affected by much because we have the experience of the Holy Scriptures, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and, and comfort of the Scriptures shall have hope. That makes you peaceable. That, that brings you peace. That's what these other heathen nations should be afraid of. Because they've seen, they have an image or an example of being a nigga in the world. They know what that stereotype looks like. They don't know what a stereotypical Israelite looks like, especially one that is um, at peace. Well, well, what, what makes us at peace? Knowing that Yahweh Shemiah was shy has selected us for deliverance and that none of the rest of these other people have a shot at it. I know that brings me peace to where when I'm around heathens and two thirds, I'm like, man, y'all just don't know. Like we have the secret scripture says, man, he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, man. We have that secret. That should make us temperate in all things. It's like, yeah, all right, well, you'll see soon enough. That's 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 my attitude, you know. As I'm dealing with, you know, people and all the rest of that, I'm dealing in, in that rulership mentality. Because none of these other heathen nations and two-thirds have rule over themselves. That's what creates that heathenistic mentality of not having any spiritual rule or governance or government, okay? We're creating through the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai leaders, not followers. We, we follow the lamb, Yahweh Shai, whether so ever he goes. However, every brother should have the full capacity to lead, okay? And that takes a lot of self-examination. It takes a lot of sacrifice. And it takes a lot of practice. Okay. This is back in 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we in incorruptible so they're doing it you know to have you know vanity and vain glory here on this side we're not doing it for that you know we're, we're rehearsing the righteous acts is that just in going out on the highways and byways and doing our lessons and that's pretty much it you know tithing you know having you know uh, uh, charity amongst brothers is that is it is that is that where is that where the the spirit of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah ends or should it continue to where we're preparing for an incorruptible crown their their crown doesn't matter we should in in the <laughs> in the approach of deliverance and salvation we should surpass that corrupt that corruptible crown. 
Because it doesn't mean anything to Yah by Shemiah Shai. The incorruptible crown is the goal, but that, that should also mean that we should have rule over the flesh. That is, that is having and utilizing our power to stay spiritually symmetrical. So um, really, that's that's the lesson, you know, through the spirit. Um, yeah, here's a definition for the word here, temperate. It says to exhibit self-government, mm, to, conduct, to conduct oneself temperately, you know, to be self-controlled. And, and believe you me, man, hey, Babylon is filled with all types of wickedness and sorcery and witchcraft and all these wicked ass holidays and all that stuff, man. But we know those things. And we also have the power to actually control those things to where it doesn't affect our spirit. We also have the power to influence righteously but with salt you know you're not going to convince a two third you're not Yahweh Bishim Yahushai could not do that you can read that in the book of Ezekiel the third chapter he says he says they're not going to listen to you they didn't listen to me so the foolishness of preaching is us being out there on the highways and byways by staying in order being in that that orderly arrangement in and, and, and harmony with Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. But while you're in the world and you're dealing with all the rest of these people, man, hey, you should be the most controlled, temperate person they've ever seen. That doesn't mean that your personality, your psyche isn't shown and you don't, you know, listen to music and, you know, you don't, um, you don't watch sports or any of that kind of stuff. But when they see you and when they're around you, they should see a, a they should experience the spirit of Yahweh by Shemiah which is really peaceful. Because Babylon is the land of confusion. So the opposite of the land of confusion is order. And order brings peace. That's righteousness. So, Lord willing, through the Spirit, this uh, lesson was received and, and edifying for the hopefully elect. Until the next time, I'm going to say, Shalom.